Alright, welcome everybody. Just going to um, get together what I was going to talk about today. I'm only going to do about 20 minutes today. Again, um, when the membership side builds up, then I'm going to go back to doing one hour to two hour live streams. But until then, keeping them short, 20 to 30 minutes, brief topic, answering a couple of questions, and then moving on. So, um, Join the uh, YouTube membership on my page. So just go to my page. It'll say subscribe. Then it'll say member or join. So until the membership builds up a little bit, I want about, you know, at least 100 members before I start doing the one, the one hour to two hour live streams. Um, until then, I'm just going to do 20 to 30 minute quick live streams, a little bit of Q&A, but mostly going over, you know, little topics. Um but when the membership builds up, I'm going to be going a lot more in depth with a lot of topics. So I'm going to bring up what I was going to teach you guys today. I just need to figure out where the hell it is. Time nutrition. Do, 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 do. Ah, this must be it. So as I mentioned before, I've got a VIP coaching course, which um, I was planning on the 10th, but I'm going to extend the start date of the VIP coaching course, probably to the end of the month to get a couple more people in. If you're interested in the VIP coaching course, which what I'm going to go over today is going to be a little bit of a... I guess a preview of what it's going to look like. The VIP coaching course is going to be two weeks long. It's going to have eight two hour group coaching sessions, kind of like, I wouldn't call them lectures. They're going to be kind of open forum, going to go over some stuff. You're going to ask questions along the way. So the, the purpose of the two week VIP coaching course is to teach you everything the history of high intensity training, basic exercise physiology basic biochemistry, nutritional science, pretty much everything you need to know. You know, a lot of people are asking me questions about plenty of, you know, relatively basic things. But if you go through this course with me, this VIP coaching course, you probably won't have any more questions. Um, I took like three months to make it. <laughs> so it's like 400, 500 slides um, in depth, every topic about exercise and um you go through this two-week course with me it'll probably it'll be a, a total of you know geez 16 hours total of teaching you're gonna know everything and um also gonna record them so after you go through the course with me you can watch them so if you're interested in the two-week vip coaching course which is going to teach you everything um email me at that email address right there um and I'll add you to the roster. So, you know, the, the sessions are probably going to be, uh, I'm shooting for 6 p.m. most nights. Uh, it's going to be dependent, kind of, you know, if we have some people on the West Coast, some people in the UK. I know a lot of people from the UK watch this. Um, in which case, I'll do a couple of classes in the afternoon so people in the UK can watch. I'll do a couple at 6 p.m. so people Eastern time zone can, can join live. And then a couple... Um, you know, 6 p.m. Pacific time so people can join after work and stuff. Um, and then everybody else can kind of watch it after. So today I'm going to give you, I'm going to go through over a topic. It's going to be machines versus free weights, huge, huge myth. And I'm going to go over this topic briefly. It's going to give you a little preview of what the course is going to look like. Uh, let's see. Which 
find where it is though. Like I said, I did hundreds and hundreds of slides. Probably like 400, I'm guessing, covering everything. Let's see. So today's topic is going to be machines versus free weights. If I can find the content. If you have any questions while I'm looking for this, go ahead and post them, and I will answer them. Uh, let's show this. Oh, just look at that. Diet nutrition. Okay. Let's try this. Exercise facts and myths, nutrition facts, and nutrition factors, nutrition facts, exercise stimulus. All right, well. Seems like I can't even find it. So, topic. Oh, by the way, I decided to give out the TRX workout plan for free if you go to my website and put in your email address. So, if you go to this website, you put in the email address. And the whole point is, I'm trying to build an email list for my supplement line. I got a couple more coming out apple cider vinegar, a couple other things. Um, so if you go here and you put in your email, your email address, you get added to the email list via that email list, you'll be sent the TRX workout for free. So, um, the whole, obviously the whole purpose is everything today, today with business, everything is email list. So I'm trying to build the email list. So I'm going to give you a free workout to build my fucking email list. <laughs> so pretty good deal. Um, Let's see, the channel member button. Uh, so it should say join. Let me look. I'm going to just go to this and then go to YouTube. Yeah, it should just, it just, it should just say join. Um, let me see. Yeah. So when, yeah. So when you, you click my channel, I'll show you. So for those of you who want to join the membership again, I'm not going to do any more long live stream Q and A's until the membership builds up. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do it. Whoops. So if you visit my page, Jay Vincent, there's going to be a join button and you click the join button. And it's $2.99 a month. And what that's going to include is two to three long live streams with Q&A every week. So during the live streams, I'm going to go over a topic like I am today. Um, but I'm going to go over it in a lot more detail and answer questions along the way. So until, you know, until the membership builds up, I'm only going to do 20, 30 minute live streams. Um, and then for the members, hour and a half, two hour live streams, two to three times a week. So all you got to do is go to the page next to the subscribe button, hit join. Make sense? Uh, all right. So machines versus reweights. This is going to be interesting. Uh, I'm sure you got some cool pictures of some things you probably have never seen before. So, machines versus free weights. What's better? Well, 
the whole reason people think that there is a difference comes down to people's complete lack of critical thinking ability. Unfortunately, critical thinking ability has been squeezed out of us since an early age because the education system likely just wants us to be little worker ants and not really think for ourselves and be reliant upon following people to tell us shit. So when you remove critical thinking ability from people, they're going to be more likely to be dependent on other people and follow people fucking blindlessly. As we notice in the fitness industry, this is the case. So the reason people think there's even a difference between free weight training and training with a machine is because of this lack of thinking, critical thinking ability and pattern recognition. So people notice that individuals who generally, people notice that there are more individuals who are very muscular and very strong that engage in free weight sports, powerlifting and Olympic lifting. And then of course the old school bodybuilders. And then they notice that people who are relatively inexperienced with exercise in the commercial gyms gravitate towards machines. So this gives people the misconception and the wrong belief that free weights make you big and strong because they see more big and strong people engaged in free weight sports and they see more inexperienced individuals using machines at your local stupid planet fitness la fitness whatever so then they assume that there's a difference in the result the tool produces well this is wrong this is a critical thinking error. So before the barbell was invented, all people did, and, and this is this is there were ancient, ancient civilizations doing exercise with body weight. And then one brilliant individual found that thousands of years ago, muscle fatigue made you stronger. But then they found that once they used their body weight for a certain period of time, the time it took to fatigue the muscle increased because all they had was their body weight. So one brilliant individual thousands of years ago decided to probably pick up a rock and found, wow, if I do my exercise while holding something heavy, it will add resistance to my exercise and accelerate the fatigue process. This is how the first dumbbell and barbell was invented. People noticed that as you did body, body weight exercises or early calisthenics, the rate of muscular fatigue slowed down. And even intuitively, people thousands of years ago realized the rate of fatigue or how aggressive you fatigue a muscle is correlated to how effective the workout stimulus is. So then they started picking up heavy things. And then they developed a barbell or a dumbbell, which was a more convenient ergonomic way to add resistance to your exercises. So the barbell and the dumbbell goes back thousands of years. Old. It was an old tool. Well, as exercise became more interesting... People found, or in more popular, people found there to be a lot of inadequacies with the barbell, a lot of problems with the barbell, such as the barbell. Actually, Arthur Jones, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let's talk about Arthur Jones first. Arthur Jones was really the most innovative individual when it came to improving the barbell. So the machines really became popular by Arthur Jones, who invented the, who started the Nautilus Exercise Company. And his story is he, he got very interested in barbell training and began studying it. And the story goes that one day he was doing a set of barbell squats in his living room and he fell through the floor. This posed a problem. 
it made so Arthur Jones noticed that there was huge inadequacies and problems with the traditional training tool, the barbell. So out of his own interest for exercise, not even to make money in the beginning, out of his own interest for exercise, he decided to try to improve the barbell with building equipment at his home. So him and his, I believe his neighbor or a friend of his together got together who was, who was a, uh, who was welder and they started putting machines together because he found that there were lots of problems with the barbell. What the fuck is FaceTiming me? Um, <clears throat> so that's when the first machines were invented. And then when he made his machines, he realized there was a huge problem in the way resistance was applied throughout the machine. And that helped him realize that there was a huge problem the way resistance was applied throughout barbell movements. So then came the invention of the cam, the bearing resistance cam. So that's just a little bit of history. So here's, here's actually the first machines that were invented. And they were called Xander machines. Look how old this is. <laughs> like, believe it or not, these machines were in a small exercise room on the Titanic. These were the, This is how far back machines go. So if you think exercise is like, if you think people have just, have only been studying exercise for the past few decades, you're wrong. They've been studying it forever. People found, and yeah, look at this. People found value in exercise long ago. These are pretty silly. But um, so the Xander machines were really the first, first gym equipment. Um, actually, let's go early Nautilus machines. So, oh man, that's tiny. Um, it's a shitty picture. Maybe I can zoom this up. So, can I zoom? I don't know how to zoom. Can I do this? So, this is what the, so Arthur Jones noticed that there's a huge problem in the amount of resistance that was applied throughout the exercise. He would notice that there's varying ability for the muscle to produce force throughout a particular range of motion. And he noticed that many exercises that placed a linear force upon the working muscle didn't allow the muscle to actually work as hard as it's capable of due to a sticking point. So, for instance, on a biceps curl, he noticed that if you had the same amount of resistance throughout a biceps curl, you'd often get stuck in the length and position due to the fact that your biceps is simply not able to produce a lot of force in the length of position, not because you achieve muscle failure, but because of an inadequacy in the design of the exercise. So what he did was he invented these really gigantic cams, which allowed the machine to vary the resistance. So the cam would be more aggressive, as you can see in a position which provided more resistance. The more aggressive the cam angle, the more resistance it provided. The flatter the cam angle, the less resistance. So as you can see, with this particular exercise, the pullover, see how it's kind of flat in the beginning? And then towards the middle of the range of motion, the cam angle gets more aggressive to apply more resistance in the middle part of the range of motion. And then as the arms reach the bottom of the range of motion, you can see the cam flattens out to reduce the amount of resistance. So Arthur Jones invented these cams to vary the resistance based on the muscle's ability to produce force. And as you can see, they look a lot like a Nautilus shell. That is where the name Nautilus came from. 
He invented these cams. He noticed they looked like a Nautilus shell, hence the name Nautilus. So basically, the purpose of the machine was to fix inadequacies in barbell exercise design. So the machine is simply an improved version of a barbell. Another advantage of the machine, who is this anyway? Teenager Gary? Gary Jones. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess his son helped invent it. Um, another good part about the machine is contrary to really popular belief which is completely wrong is that you want to try to, you you don't want to put effort into maintaining proper body positioning you don't want to put effort into maintaining center of gravity and stabilizing your body as you're trying to work a particular muscle group This is what people call stabilization exercises or doing an exercise which works your stabilizers. This is completely, utterly backwards. The more involvement you recruit from other muscle groups for performing functions like maintaining center of gravity or stabilization, the less involvement you're going to get out of the targeted muscle group. And the purpose of the exercise is to generate an aggressive level of fatigue in the targeted muscle group. So if you do an exercise which, re which requires you to balance or stabilize, you're not going to be able to inroad the muscle group you're trying to actually work as much. Therefore, it is less effective. Keep in mind, there's no such thing as a muscle that only stabilizes. Stabilization is a, a role a muscle can play. For instance, when you are doing a standing barbell curl, I'll show you. When you are doing a standing barbell curl, your glutes are acting as a stabilizer, keeping you in the extended position in hip extension. But you do not do a standing barbell curl to work your glutes, do you? No. Your hamstrings are also acting as stabilizers. Same with your calves. But you do not do a standing barbell curl to work your hamstrings, your calves, or your glutes. Keep in mind, just because a muscle is involved in a particular movement does not mean it is effectively worked and stimulated. So doing an exercise for the sake of training or stabilizers is absolutely ridiculous. The goal of an exercise is to identify the exercise's function. And throughout that function, add resistance to it in order to aggressively fatigue the musculature. So this is what a machine does. A machine allows you to remove relative involvement of other muscle groups in order to place a heavy emphasis on the targeted muscle group and fatigue it aggressively. This also makes machines safer. So basically what the machine is, well, yeah, there's Casey Vieter. <clears throat> what the machine is, is an improved version of a barbell. The body does not know the difference between a goddamn machine, a barbell, a sack of rocks, or a big heavy log in the woods. As long as you are effectively 
generating a deep level of stress in the muscle. The muscle will respond similarly, almost identically, regardless of what tool you use. The only reason people think there's a difference is because when you look at Olympic lifters, Olympic lifting is a sport, you will notice they exhibit muscular physiques and a lot of strength. But you need to realize, look at this guy, look at the size of him, Jesus Christ. But you need to realize that just like tall people gravitate towards basketball due to the advantage height gives them in the sport, short, muscular people with high neuromuscular efficiency gravitate towards Olympic lifting because somewhere down the road they realize, probably in their early teens, that they're stronger than everybody because of their genetics. They realize they're super strong, and then somebody recommends that they get into weightlifting as a sport. Nobody just decides one day that I want to be an Olympic weightlifter, so I'm going to start lifting weights. No. Generally, the body type chooses the activity. Just like tall people choose basketball, muscular strong people choose Olympic weightlifting, muscular strong people choose bodybuilding. Set my camera. Hold on. It's only got a like a thirty minute timer on it. So let me put it back on. So I can a different camera settings. Oh come on! Doesn't want to work. Hold on a sec. <sighs> you know, spend all this money trying to make these live streams look better. Just for them to fuck off. Yeah. Oh no, no. Hold on. <sighs> Looks like I'm going to have to get a different camera. You going to work? No? Don't want to work? Okay. Well, we'll stick with this. Why don't you want to work? All right, well, it doesn't really matter until the camera wants to work. So look at Ronnie Coleman Young. <laughs> this is Ronnie Coleman before steroids. I know you don't believe it, but it's fucking true. This is Ronnie Coleman before steroids. Can you believe it? People with ridiculous genetics like this. Mm, that might be after. <laughs> People with ridiculous genetics like this gravitate towards things like bodybuilding. Never does somebody... Yeah, this is pre-steroids. Never does somebody just determine or decide they want to be a professional bodybuilder and then start bodybuilding and boom, they become, um, become. Um, can you guys hear me? There we go. Yeah. So it's generally people with physiques like this. That gravitate towards bodybuilding. Kai Green was the same way. Kai Green. Kai Green was discovered. Look at him. Pre-steroids. So, you know, just like all the people say that I'm on steroids. Guys, I don't even, I don't look like this motherfucker. <laughs> I do not look like that. 
a lot of people believe that physiques like this are not possible without steroids. Well, this is kind of green at like 17. You can't take steroids then. And I think it was like four months after we started training. Look at this guy. Um, yeah, so believe it or not, you know, really good physiques are possible without steroids. Um, and these are the people who gravitate towards bodybuilding and get ridiculous. You know, that's a natural competition. <clears throat> so, the people with these genetics generally gravitate towards um, things like bodybuilding, things like weightlifting. Why the hell is this camera not working? Why does it do this shit? Hold on. I hate this shit. You know, it's just ridiculous. There's no reason why that shouldn't work, but it's not. Let's see. Let me just hold on a second. Hell, I gotta turn the stupid camera off. Down it. What did I buy this camera for? It doesn't work. No. Ah, fuck that camera. I'm getting a different one. All right. Um, well, let's see if it decides to work. Who the fuck? So that is, that is that. So the difference between machines, well, think about it this way. So you look at, sure, there's, there is no difference between machines and tree, uh, free weight training. So you look at uh, Casey Vieter, who trained on Nautilus machines pretty much only, all right? Like, if machines were so bad and a physique like this would be impossible he looks fucking ridiculous that's crazy i mean he is on steroids all right that is now that's also him before steroids so <laughs> you guys are wondering like the the genetics required to be like a big jack bodybuilder it's this i know nobody wants to believe it i i don't even look like that Ridiculous. So that's that. Let's see if my camera wants to work. Nope. Nope. It doesn't. I would really prefer my camera to work. I want to show up. Technology is fucking retarded. It just doesn't want to show up right now. I don't know why. Why? Why doesn't it want to show up? All right. Well, I'm going to go through questions <sighs> until the camera decides to want to work. Why the fuck want to work? It just doesn't want to show up now? Probably because StreamYard is a giant piece of shit. Well, So, questions. I'm at least going to set it to HD. Let me go through some questions now. Yeah, 
anybody knows why my camera won't show up now after it just turned off for no fucking reason, please let me know. Because it's really, really, really pissing me off. Because I put a lot of effort into getting this stupid camera to work. Hold on one second. Let me try something. Oh, I have no idea. Like, why? Why wouldn't the camera show back up? Does anybody know? Anybody know the camera show? Camera turns off, won't show back up on Streamyard. Oh, yeah. This is the. This is not the right camera, though. This is the computer camera. The DSLR will not show back up. Why? I don't fucking know. All right, whatever. All right, um, so I'm going to go through some questions now. It's been like 30 minutes. I'll, I'll do five minutes of questions. If it's questions I've answered a million times before, I'm just going to skip over them. I don't mean to be a dick, but I can't answer the same question 5,000 times. I just can't do it. Can you get yoked from body weight only? Again, whether or not you get yoked, like I just uh, went through, is based on your genetics. It doesn't matter what tool you use. If you have the right genetics, you're going to get yoked doing just about anything. Um, not, no, not burpees. <laughs> body weight exercises like a chin up, push up, uh, things like that, that'll build a lot of muscle with the right genetics. Burpees will do not will not do anything burpees are retarded don't waste your time doing burpees please which gyms have the best machines completely depends on the gym when uh when a commercial gym opens they're given a catalog by a um a company that supplies their gym equipment and they just go through because i almost bought a planet or not a planet fitness i almost bought a anytime fitness once right before the lockdown so good thing i did not do it because the lockdown came like <laughs> right when i was about to do it um and you have a catalog and you could select through life fitness matrix hammer strength hammer strength mts so gyms just pick whatever they want so you do not know what gym has uh, gyms vary with what equipment they have gummies coming to amazon shortly yeah, believe it or not, it is a huge pain in the ass for Amazon to accept you <laughs> and sell your stuff. Not easy and expensive. Does it just depend on what you're looking for? There are a lot of factors to consider between the two, safety, balance, etc. Uh, what do you mean? No, doesn't depend on what you're looking for. The, the results between machines and free weights are going to be exactly the same. Machines are generally going to be safer and a little more efficient. It does not depend on what you're looking for. You should be looking for the most safe and efficient approach to exercise. So you should probably be choosing machines in a lot of cases. Almost every gym you're going to go to has hammer strength plate loaded machines. If you choose free weight exercises over that, you're just an idiot. You're just an idiot. <clears throat> All right. So let me just have that. Oh, what's your program? All right. Does your program have anything in it for the scourge of modern society? forward neck well 
if you are training all your major muscle groups evenly, your your neck, that tex neck they call it, um, is going to improve. I mean, think about it. I run my whole life through my phone. I look at my phone all damn day. I don't have text neck. It's because I'm training all the muscle groups with adequate volume or frequency. So I wouldn't worry too much about training your neck just yet. I would focus on, um, what are you looking at? <laughs> the dog does silly shit sometimes. I would focus on first just training all your muscles. Don't worry about the back. Don't make it too complicated to begin with. What do you think about smoking weed after training? Probably not a good idea. I think smoking weed, if you smoke weed, I, I'm not a big believer in drugs and alcohol. I think they are a sign of weakness, honestly. If you need to smoke weed or drink after training, you're just emotionally and psychologically weak. And you need to work on what is making you that way. You need to, instead of running away or trying to hide from the thing that is bothering you, you're probably better off just facing the thing that is bothering you and um, not trying to cover it up with drugs or alcohol. If you're smoking weed or drinking after training, it, you've got your priorities a little fucked up. Smoking weed is probably going to hinder recovery ability. Not that... Um, um, CBD probably CBD probably enhances recoverability for all I know. They found a lot of good stuff, a lot of good side effects of that. But uh, THC, you know, anything that's going to dull your nervous system, not a good idea. Why are burpees retarded? Well, burpees are retarded because rather than aggressively fatiguing, well, first of all, burpees require momentum. Momentum produces excess force. Excess force can cause injury. Number one reason burpees are retarded. Number two reason. Burpees do not produce any aggressive level of fatigue in any muscle group. They produce a little of fatigue in a bunch of muscle groups. With a, no, with, with a net gain in strength of literally fucking zero. Of course, they give you the illusion of being effective because you're using a bunch of muscles and your cardiovascular system is therefore going to have to work pretty hard in the beginning to accommodate all those different muscles. But um, <clears throat> it's not going past the first couple of weeks of doing a burpee. The, the reason burpees seem to work is because most group training classes um, – Basically, the type of people who go to group training classes are fat middle-aged women. All right, let's be honest. Fat middle-aged women who are so deconditioned physically, metabolically, and cardiovascularly that any movement is going to be hard for them. So they get a bunch of these fat middle-aged women doing burpees. They start to sweat. They start to feel tired. And people believe the burpee is effective. You have me do a burpee, I'll do, I'll do burpees all fucking day long. They will do absolutely nothing for me. Burpees only work for metabolically, muscularly, and cardiovascularly deconditioned people in the beginning. But very quickly, your nervous system will adapt with um, its muscle fiber recruitment pattern to use less energy doing a burpee, which will render a burpee literally useless after the first couple of weeks. And burpees will not make you progress progressively stronger. Burpees are not progressive. You cannot progressively overload a burpee. There's so many reasons why burpees are stupid. I could do, I could ramble for two hours about it. How do you know how much weight to use at first? Choose a weight which allows you to reach muscle failure within eight to 12 repetitions with slow repetitions. Free weights make me look cool. To who? Trust me, nobody's watching. <laughs> nobody's fucking watching me in the gym. Are people watching me at the gym? Fuck yeah, they are. Because I look like a fucking freak. Are people watching most other people? No. Who am I watching at the gym? Fucking nobody. 
I'm staring at the ground. I'm staring at the machine. Nobody's watching you. But I would say a lot of people believe that free weights make them look cool. There's this guy. So <clears throat> a lot of the time, see if this cam works now. Doubt it, but we'll see. A lot of the time, um, come on, you fucker. Let's see. Probably not, because StreamYard sucks. A lot of the time, um, when I go to this commercial gym I've been going to, because it's right down the street. What a piece of shit. You gotta be kidding me. Um, there's this guy there. He's a big, he was a big dude. I mean, short. He's probably like 5'8", but he was probably about 230, 235. And he was doing rack pulls with like five plates on each side. And in L.A. fitness, screaming, making all this attention. So a lot of people will use free weights for that reason, for fucking attention. I don't know what this guy is. He probably has a really tiny dick to go to an L.A. fitness where there are a bunch of just very average people into rack pull five plates on each side, which is a pointless fucking exercise. The only, the only reason you would want to rack pull five plates on each side is because you can move five plates on each side and you think people are watching you. But he's yelling ugh, ugh, in an L.A. fitness. So these are the type of people who use free weights. People who just want attention. And it's really, 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 really pathetic. Your best free weight exercise and best machine exercise. DP, you always give a lot of good questions. I like when you come in because you actually ask good questions. <laughs> you don't want to ask me like, oh, it will take me to grow a fucking extra nipple. No, you actually ask me good questions, and I really appreciate it, DP. <clears throat> um, if I could give you a free membership, I would. Maybe I will. Your best free weight exercise and best machine exercise. The best free weight exercise is a barbell curl. Perfect. The reason a barbell curl is great is because when your arm is fully extended, I've said this so many times, when your arm is fully extended, there's no moment arm. So there's no resistance on your biceps. At 90 degrees elbow flexion, you get the most resistance where your biceps are the strongest. And then, as you can tell, when you come up again, the moment arm decreases, placing less tension on the biceps again. So the barbell biceps curl is the best for you at exercise. There's really no reason, almost, to use a machine for a barbell curl. Best exercise for a machine. Um... With a good machine, the leg press. Because the only problem with a squat, really, is that it requires a lot of skill and a lot of balance. And it can be hard on your back because you're loading the weight on your back. But a well-designed leg press requires no balance, no skill. It does not load your back, and it works the legs just as hard. So the best for, the best machine exercise, if it's a well-designed machine, like a uh, Nautilus, Hammer Strength, MedX, some Cybex, leg press. Best for your exercise, barbell curl. Are there any tech nerds in here? Who can help me figure out why my, the, you know, the camera timer went off um, and I'm trying to reconnect it and it won't, it won't show back up on stream. I have no idea why. Absolutely ridiculous. I don't, I just really don't fucking get it. Um, all right, let's see. All right, what's your opinion on single joint isolation exercises and whether they should be performed in a single set as a common exercise? Well, just like everything with exercise, I mean, it really it really depends. Um, position is a little more stuck. All right.
there. You guys can look at my shrine. So the thing about um, isolation exercises, everything in exercise depends. You know, if you have an individual who, you know, they push kind of hard on a compound movement, but, but they don't push that hard. They're probably going to get benefit out of doing other simple exercise, single joint exercise, like a curl and an extension, stuff like that. Uh, leg extension, hamstring curl, stuff like that. But, you know, some individuals on a compound exercise inroad so deeply that an additional biceps curl or triceps extension will probably result in overtraining. I found this to be the case with me. I generally like to incorporate a biceps curl. But I'll notice when I do it for a couple of weeks, I start to overtrain. And then I have to take it out. So I'd recommend most people include the, you know, the simple movements, the single joint movements. And if you find that your muscles are feeling overtrained with them, then take them out. <clears throat> do you stretch? No. Stretching is built into exercise. Stretching is just a way to create tension on the muscle by putting it in a fully extended position. When you're weightlifting, you're creating tension in the muscle. It's the same exact thing. Uh, there's really no need to stretch unless you have something like, I mean, uh, stretching could be beneficial for people who sit a lot. Um, stretching could be beneficial for anterior pelvic tilt, stuff like that. But most people do not need to incorporate stretching into their workout. What's your opinion on sleds? Dumb. Metabolically demanding, but again, anything you achieve from a sled can be achieved better by training the muscle groups independently. Leg press, 45 degree angle, right? Yeah, that leg press sucks. Uh, the, the leg press like this, horrible. Don't use it. You ever see those memes? I'll show you. Uh, 45 degree leg press. Have you ever seen those memes where those assholes load up a ton of weight? Um, oh, here we go. I like this guy. I filmed the guy um, at a gym I used to go to, and I think he saw it. He was a trainer, and I made fun of him. I filmed him because he was like this. He had the whole machine loaded up like this. And I filmed him and called him a fucking retard because he is. If you're a trainer at a gym and you're doing this kind of shit, you need to be fucking fired. The only reason <clears throat> you're able to do this much machine or this much weight on this machine is because the, the machine is literally a simple tool. <laughs> so <clears throat> you guys probably remember from, um, you guys probably remember from like uh, middle school or elementary school. Um, Wedge actually. Machine wedge tool. Um, oh, yeah. So the machine. That's it. You guys probably remember from um, elementary school learning about simple machines. This is a simple machine called an incline plane. And the purpose of an incline plane is to be able to move weight, something heavy, higher with less effort than simply picking it up. This is an incline plane like this. Oops. Actually, we'll just... Share the entire screen. I'll share this actually this time. So the 45 degree leg press is, is this. <laughs> it's what it is. And that's the reason you are able to lift 
so much weight? It's because of the inclined plane or that leg press. It allows you to move weight B higher with less force than simply lifting it. And that is why it is a stupid, stupid exercise. And that is why people are able to put so much weight on it. So it's literally a tool designed to allow you to lift more weight. <laughs> it's so fucking ridiculous. Ooh. If I don't have access to a chest press machine, would it be a good idea to pair a barbell bench press with resistance bands? No. No. Because um, the resistance curve of a bench press is you're weaker in this position, strongest somewhere in the middle, and then weaker. Well, actually, you're kind of stronger at the top due to a decrease in moment arm. Um, But again, you're going to have increasing resistance. It's it's not going to it's not going to match the strength curve of of a bench press. If you're going to do a bench press, do a bench press. Adding resistance bands are not going to make it any more effective. And if it's not a power rack, uh, what if you get to the point where there's more resistance in the lockout and you can't lock it out and re-rack it? Then you're going to drop the weight on yourself. So don't. If I train MMA for two hours, can I lift the next day or should I take a day off? I'm pretty fatigued in my arms the next day. All right. Well, yeah, if you're feeling fatigued in your arms, don't. Um, only go to the gym when your body feels fully recovered and fully rested. The worst mistake you could ever make is putting your body through an intense workout when it's not fully recovered or fully rested. Don't do it. Less is more. Best ab, ab exercise to go to failure, a basic floor crunch. Um, in my Patreon, I have a video of a floor crunch. Um, by the way, my Patreon, I've got a lot of exercise demonstrations I'm going to be uploading to the Patreon channel. I've been a little low on the content with Patreon. There's a lot of content on Patreon, but I haven't uploaded as much new content lately because I've been busy nailing this course down. But the new the Patreon channel is going to have a lot of new exercise demonstrations that I've been filming over the course of the last month. Tons of them, um, tons of them. I literally yesterday spent the whole day voiceover. No, yesterday, yeah, yesterday I voiceovered like dozens of videos, demonstration videos, and I'm going to be uploading one to two a week on the Patreon channel. So if you want voiceover demonstrations, patreon.com forward slash Jay Vincent. I got a shitload of content coming up on there. <clears throat> so the best ab exercise is just a crunch on the floor, and that's on the Patreon. Guy the other day loaded up like five forty-five plates on both sides of the Smith machine and did light press. <laughs> exactly. What a fucking retard. Oh man, ego press. Yeah, it's like. If you ever see someone on that like press machine with a ton of weight, you know what kind of person they are. They are just a pathetic, pathetic, weak person. I have no respect for those people. If you're in the gym and you're using less weight and training with good form, I know you're a savage and you're smart. But if you're loading up any machine and moving quickly, you're you're a weak, 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 pathetic little bitch. Let's see. Can I add laterals and reverse lateral to your hit unit course? You can add laterals. You can substitute lateral raise for overhead press. In terms of reverse pec fly, pointless. Don't even do it. It's a tiny muscle group. Let's look at the size of the rear delt. I know this was only supposed to be 30 minutes, but actually, you know, I like doing this, believe it or not. So. Rear deltoid. All right, so here's the rear delt. So 
So people often ask, should I do a reverse fly? Guys, look how small this fucking muscle group is. The rear delt is going to be ridiculously fatigued in any sort of pulling movement. You do not need a reverse fly to work this tiny little muscle group. And this is like a, an exaggerated picture. Most of you have a tiny, tiny rear delt. There's no need to add additional exercises for such a small muscle group. A um, any pulling movement is going to work that fine. I've never done a rear delt fly. Absolutely pointless. Pointless. Our sit was bad. Sit ups are bad. Abdominal crunches are good. Um. All right. I'll give you guys a little gift. <laughs> so I'll show you. If you guys promise to go to my website and sign up for the newsletter, I'm going to show you a recent uh, abdominal exercise I did. Actually, shit, no. Never mind. I didn't voice that one over. Shit. I got to voice it over today. Uh, but I'll show you the one on my YouTube channel for my private videos. I generally, I save this video for people who do one I'm on coaching with me. By the way, if you guys want a, a, a custom diet and workout plan with videos like the one I'm going to show you right now. So I have a huge series of, um, oh shit, Masvidal is fighting Kobe Covington. Oh yeah, it's tomorrow. Fuck, big UFC fight tomorrow. Um, so I have a huge, huge, huge series of instructional videos that I have for um, workout plan and workout plans and diet guides. So I'm going to give you an example of the videos I reserve for creating people workout plans and diet guides. I have a ton of these, ton of these videos. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the ab ones. You guys can see the best abdominal exercise. Okay. Again, these, this is a private video. You will not see this on my channel because it's reserved only for people who get um, workout plans for me. So the workout plan include a bunch of videos that look like this. All right. So I'm going to show you how to do a abdominal crunch properly. And if you do an abdominal crunch like this, it's incredible. So if, if anything, you want to be able to get a little back pad. So you see how I put that little back pad there? Most gyms have these. Um, most gyms have these little back pads, as you can see here. I have it reversed in order to get a little deeper, but you'll probably want to start the other way. So put that little curve in your lumbar. You just want to very gradually up, tuck, hold, come down slow. Change direction slow. Up, tuck, squeeze, come down slow. This is the only abdominal exercise you, you need. And if you do it like this, it will be the hardest F exercise you've ever done. This is like rep three. I'm already dying. This is the best ab exercise that you can do. And all you need is a floor, preferably a little pad. You use a t-shirt or something. Look how I'm doing it. I'm holding the contracted position, squeezing, and then unsqueezing. Think, come, contract, 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 squeeze, and unsqueeze. It's a fab. That's all you need. That's all you need. So all, all those videos, um, I have videos demonstration videos like that that one didn't have a voiceover i have another voiceover one and these are for um custom workout plans and diets so all the custom workout plans come with videos like that 
So if you want one, email me at the jvincentfitness.com. You just or email me at jvincentfitness at gmail.com. Just give me a background of your or of your training and diet history, and I'll make you a plan that has videos like that. All right, let's see. Even if I just train legs, well, depends on how hard you go with MMA. If you go really hard, take the next day off, man. You know, you gotta remember you're not only are you creating systemic inflammation and stuff, there's a lot of micro trauma that's happening in MMA. You need that next day to repair that trauma, or else you're gonna get hurt. Custom plan. Oh yeah, Martin. I'm behind on the custom plans because I had to spend the last two, three days fucking crunching two courses that I'm doing. And I haven't had time to get to the plans because I'm in I'm in crunch time with these, trying to get them done. So if you had a custom plan and you haven't gotten it yet, please just email me again. I've been way fucking behind doing these courses. And I'm going to try to use the rest of today. i got a couple voiceovers to do. I'm going to try to use the rest of today to get them out. Okay? So if we had a call and I didn't send you your plan yet, please email me. I'm going to go through and see who I didn't do today. But the reason is, past couple days, I had to get these courses out, finished, edited, etc. So I'm behind. But I will do them today. All right. Let's see. I'm going to do just a couple more. All right, do your shoulders touch the ground on this? Um, well, let's look again. Got a couple more minutes. Um, ta -da. So, by the way, what we're doing right now, guys, this is going to be what I'm going to do for the members. I guess I'm doing it for you now. But this is what a member live stream is going to be like. We're going to go through videos. I'm going to explain shit to you, answer questions, go over topics. So go to my page, click join, this kind of shit. Martin, thank you. I mean, you're German. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Martin. Martin. Um, he's a member. This kind of, I'm going to do this kind of thing two to three times a week for all the members. We're going to go over everything, um, including all of my private videos, a lot of my private videos. So let's see. Do I touch? Do my shoulders touch the ground? I mean... Yeah, they probably. I'm, I would touch. I would touch the ground. Yeah, come back, but briefly tap it. Really, what you're focused on is this contraction. You're focused on squeeze and unsqueeze, and then you want to feel that tension on the way back. You want to feel the abdominals loaded on the eccentric phase here. Nothing's happening back here. Squeeze unsqueeze that's what you want to be focused on you're focused when you're training your abs you're focused on squeezing and contracting notice this is a lot different than a sit-up with a sit-up most people kind of fling themselves into the upright position where their torso is perpendicular at the floor that doesn't do shit that doesn't do shit hey you guys want to look at what i watch on youtube yeah i watch ridiculous shit i don't know what this is about i've been watching a lot of andrew tate lately this guy's fucking hilarious of course elliot Joe Rogan, you know, or jazz. <laughs> My YouTube history is fucking hilarious. So, yeah. So, you just want to be focusing on... Thanks, Martin, for sending me an email. Um, so, my... Uh, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So, whether or not your shoulders touch the ground, fuck it. You just want to make sure you're squeezing and contracting, and then I'm squeezing. All right? I'm going to answer uh, just like one more question. Poor dog. My dog is hurt. All right. Julio, took your course. Thank you. And ever since I did, I've gotten stronger. I wish I knew this. Spent so much time doing free weights and working out every day installing. Yeah, that's what most people do. Um, you guys got to remember, workouts of stress. Working out. Is fatigue. What is fatigue? Fatigue is stress. Stress on all the systems. Not only stress on the muscle, stress on your joints and connective tissue, stress on your metabolism, stress on your cardiovascular system. If you if you accumulate too much stress, you're not going to stimulate the adaptation. You're actually going to have a counter counter effect. You're going to degress, regress. All right. So um, 
you know, you know, one more thing, guys. Obviously, I've been promoting my supplement. Try, I'm trying to get into the uh, supplement industry here. Trying to create things that I think people want and need. So, obviously, the gummy supplement. You know, if you guys want to support me, support my supplement, please go ahead and try them. They taste fucking so good. I wish I could eat them all day. But, you know, everybody's sick and tired of a supplement company. I get it. Or supplement industry. I get it. But the horse has been beaten to death. People are annoyed to supplement companies. So I'm trying to get in there and give people things they can actually fucking use. Things that, you know, th there's really nothing... This is basically like eating a good diet. I mean, the best thing about this stuff, really, I mean, yeah, of course, you've heard me saying a million times, you got deaspartic acid, rages endogenous testosterone. Yes. Horny goat weed increases your libido. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could get something to increase your libido at a gas station. Wouldn't really recommend it. But the real point of this stuff I came out with, and I would like if you guys could, you know, just share it. Get this out there. The real point of this is called male vitality, right? What makes, what enhances male vitality? Let's talk about um, sex drive. Duh. So this has the horny goat weed stuff in it and vasodilators. Increases sex drive. What improves male vitality? Testosterone. The aspartic acid improves testosterone. The one thing, you know, the best thing about this stuff I have found personally is the B vitamins. Obviously, you can get B vitamins from like eggs, other meat, vegetables, whatever. But let's be real. Most people are not eating that shit. So the thing I found that work that is that is the most intriguing about this. And again, I made I worked with this guy, Dr. Mike, for this. And uh, he was kind of like one of those, he was a pothead, which is kind of funny. Um, Dr. Mike was just like some fucking pharmacologist pothead. And he knows a lot of stuff. So the most intriguing thing about the male vitality thing I, I made is it kind of removes that crash. You know how like when you're like 2 to 3 p.m. and you're like, fuck. And you start to drop, right? And the reason you're starting to drop, it's like, it's, it's a sugar drop, first of all. So if you're dieting well, you're not going to have that sugar crash. But the reason you kind of drop is like the caffeine kind of like wears off. Granted, I drink a, a pot of coffee every morning. I'm not going to lie. But the thing I've noticed, like, irrefutably about taking this shit is the, the B6 and B12 in it. And the B6 and B12, I found, removes that like 2 to 3 p.m. dip, that 2 to 3 p.m. drop. So my day starts at like 7, 6.30 maybe. Cup of coffee, I start hammering. Working on all my shit. Drink my coffee. Eat a little something. Sometimes eat something. Normally, like, honestly, I'm just eating peanut butter and bread. Take this shit. And I'm like fucking going till 4.35, ripping. And the only thing I've done differently, and I'm not here to be like the fucking fitness industry fraud retards, all right? I'm dead serious. The B vitamins do that. The B vitamins in this shit. You can go take B vitamins. You can get them at fucking Walmart, of course. But the B vitamins in this, just like the laser focus all day. I don't know. I've seen a huge difference with the B vitamin supplementation in this shit when it comes to long lasting energy and focus throughout the day. So if you want to support my new supplement company, I'm coming out with, you know, apple cider vinegar. Of course, everyone's doing that. Um, seems to help. I mean, I'm not coming out with any like muscle building supplements. I'm coming out with things for men. Increase your testosterone, your energy, and your sex drive. That's what this shit does. 
All right. Try it. Somebody left a comment <laughs> on my YouTube the other day. It was like, oh, your nutrition advice is good, but your supplements are garbage. I'm like, maybe try them, dude. Just, I mean, fuck. There are some supplements that actually do some shit. And I've noticed with this shit, the B vitamins are fucking killer. They, they really are. They, it's the only shit, it's the only thing I take. And biotin. Stuff like that. And I'm also going to come out with like hair, skin, and nails, biotin thing. You know, just normal shit that actually help people. All right, so that's it for today. Guys, go ahead. Javensoffitness.com. Try my supplement. Give it a whirl. Um, sign up for the newsletter on Javensoffitness.com. Right there. And I'm sending out the TRX for free. Because, you know. I want to build a good, a good um, email base. All right. So go ahead, jvincentfitness.com. Sign up for the newsletter. I'm going to compile all the signups and blast email the TRX plan. Okay. And how about this? If you subscribe to jvincentfitness.com, the new gym based hit thing, video plan that I'm. Making with Elliot Hulls, that's what I've been crushing on. I'll give everybody in this email list a discount, okay? So if you go to the website right here, sign up for the email list. When my program with Elliot Hulls comes out, so Elliot Hulls actually has a publishing company. He does the sales copy. He does the ebook. He does the website. They do all that shit. So all I'm doing now is filming all the videos, voicing them over, editing them, I'm basically done. Then we got to do the copy together. We got to do all that other stuff. And then Elliot Holes is going to publish it for me. So when we do this, if you sign up for the new, the newsletter right here by going to my website, I'll give you a 15, 20% discount, whatever me and Elliot decide on for the new workout program. Um, I'll give you a little hint. This is what the workout program is going to look like. All right. To make it even better, I'll give you a, little preview of what the videos are looking like for this new workout program. So if you left the live stream, don't leave just yet. I'm going to show you guys a video of the new workout program that will give you a discount on if you uh, go sign up to the, the newsletter. And, of course, try try the gummies. Like, they're fucking good. <laughs> it's got... Oh, yeah. It's also got L. So the L arginine in this, too, is a vasodilator. You know what that means? You want to really know what that means? It gives you hard, hard boners. All right. Hard boners. Hard boners are good, aren't they? So it's got vasodilators in it. So this, I mean, libido and rock hard boners. All right. So I'm going to show you guys what this new course I'm working on with Elliot is going to look like. What the fuck is this? No, don't open messages. All right. Which video would you like to see? All right. So I've got a gazillion different exercises. All right. So guys, let me know. These are the exercises. I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek to one of them for the new course I'm doing with Elliot. I'm going to show you guys what the course is going to look like. I'm going to show you one full video of one exercise. I'm doing like 60 exercises in this fucking thing. Common exercises and machines you'll see at a gym. That's going to be in this course. Smith machine exercises, body weight exercises, and free weight exercises. Everything in this course, and I film demonstrations of everything. So what exercise do you guys want to see? I'm going to show you one video. All right, one video from the new course that I'm working on with Elliot Halls. What exercise do you want to see? Pull down machine, plate loaded row. Pull down cable, overhead press on a typical matrix machine, barbell curl, Smith machine exercise, abdominal exercise, pec fly exercise, chin up exercise. Just what do you want to see? I got them all. And I'll show you one video. Now, if there's no recommendations, I'm just going to pick one. Curls. I did the I did the curl actually. I did the curl on the, if 
I want to see Elliot Holes do anything. Yeah, that guy. He, yeah, he he pushes so hard. Sometimes I get nervous, like he's gonna like fucking kill himself. All right. Well, I did. I just use free weights. All right. So do I have any free weights here? I've got an elbow extension for the triceps here. All right. I'll show you guys that one. Let's play that. So the exercise I'm going to show you guys is a free weight barbell elbow extension exercise. How do I do this? All right. You know what? I'm just going to share my screen. So this is what the course is going to look like. We're going to show the whole fucking screen. Fuck it. Here we go. Bada bang. All right. Ready? Turn your volume up. The barbell triceps extension exercise, or most commonly known as the skull crusher. I'm going to start in the extended position, as you see here. Lower the bar to about eye level. And bring the bar low enough to where you feel a very slight stretch in the triceps. Avoid bringing it too far, as this may be irritating to your tendons. Change direction slowly. Avoid full extension. You will eventually reach or approach muscle failure in the halfway point. When you do, contract for an additional few seconds, and then you're going to bring the bar to your chest to terminate the exercise. So that's kind of what the videos are going to look like. Um, with the course I'm doing with Elliot. So as you can see, I'm doing a bunch of, yeah, Ox Monster. I know, I know, dude, corn syrup and sugar in your supplements, terrible. Dude, what, what the fuck do you want to put in them to make them not taste like shit? Dude, like, well, here's the thing, Ox Monster. I actually started a supplement company. What the fuck are you doing besides commenting dumb shit on YouTube? <laughs> you're, fu you're a fucking loser. Anyway, so, um, that's a demonstration of the type of videos that are going to be in the Elliot Holes thing. So go ahead to go to sign up for the newsletter on Jay Vincent Fitness, um, and I'll give you a yeah, you are a troll box monster, dude. You're such a fucking nerd. Um, and I'll give you a discount for that, that workout plan. All right. All right, hour and a half. Also, yeah, again, join the membership. I did a long one today, um, but this is kind of how I'm going to do them for the members, the YouTube members. So go ahead and um, join, become a member. Actual skull crusher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that thing was, that, that's a hard exercise. It's actually really, really good if you do it nice and slow. I prefer the cable, really, but here's the thing. In the new course I did with Elliot, I included everything. I did, uh, you know, barbells, cables. There's a bunch of cable exercise in there too. So basically, you know, take like this course is going to cover everything, which kind of sucks as a from a business perspective. If I cover everything, it's, it's going to be hard to come out with a new course in the future. But whatever. <sighs> all right, I'm beat. That's enough for me. I got to take my dog out to shit. So, all right, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Go ahead, visit the website. Blah 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 blah. Like, subscribe. And if uh, you guys can fucking okay, give me a clue why my stupid camera keeps sucking, it'd be appreciated. All right. Thank you, Deezy.